How's it going everyone? The public beta of iOS 18.4 is now officially released for the beta 3. And in this video, we're not only gonna go ahead and go in depth in terms of going over the new changes, new features, but also talk about the performance numbers and more additional information you need to know about this latest version. So of course, timestamps and everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Now the devices that also receive this new beta update are listed right there on the side. Basically, basically we have the Apple Watch, iPad, Mac, Vision, they all also received the beta update as well. So something that was promised on iOS 18 originally was nearby interactions with like your smart locks and stuff by simply walking to up towards and it'll automatically identify it and unlock without you having to tap on your phone. That is now compatible and enable on, on beta three, which means third party developers of those smart locks can now utilize the ultra wide band that's built on on the Apple watch and on the iPhone. And then another noticeable change can be located on the Apple Wallet app, as now when you tap over here, you now have pre-authorized payments where previously, during the earlier betas, it used to just been subscription and payments. So they retitled that from previous betas. And then something I discovered, if you're somebody who uses third-party messenger apps like Facebook Messages as an example, gen emojis are now compatible to be used on WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger or other third-party apps as well. So you can literally generate like quick gen emojis right here on the spot on other social media platforms. And then if you have the Apple Intelligence feature enabled on your action button, now you have an indicator telling you the long hold to open up Apple Visual Intelligence. So this will apply if you're using Apple Visual Intelligence on the action button on like an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max or the 16E as we have here. But a new tool that was added to us for Apple Vision can be located in the camera app. If you scroll down to the camera section and then tap on camera controls. And if you go down, you will see a new launch visual intelligence and you can enable press and hold. So now you have the ability to turn that off. So now whenever you long hold, it doesn't do anything. If you don't want Apple intelligence to pop up on your side button over here for your action control, your camera control, because as we know, this camera button right here, if you long hold, it will launch Apple visual intelligence. But if you don't like that, now you have the ability to just go back in here and disable it and then long hold, it's not going to do anything. So all you're left with is the camera control. And then if you launch the podcast app, it will tell you that there's new widgets now that got added because we have a new splash screen window animation now where we can now add a widget for our podcast library as well as shows that we follow widget. And then if we play like a podcast or something or even like a YouTube video, if you go down in control center and you tap the top portion, now we have quick access to our microphone settings, regardless if we're on a phone call or not, because I'm just playing a simple podcast and I have access to this because if we do the same thing on the previous version of iOS 18.4, here I have a YouTube video playing. I don't have access to this at all. It doesn't pop up. And if I do the exact same thing on the iPhone 16 Pro that's on the latest software and we launch like this YouTube video, I'm gonna lower the audio real quick. Repeat the same process. It launches automatically, but something tells me it's currently being bugged or tweaked because uh, if we unselect automatic, it's really dimmed and almost grayed out and it bugs each and every time I do that. So this might be a bug. I'm not sure if this is a feature or maybe Apple's tweaking it to the point where they're trying to perfect this. So it's a dedicated feature, but as of right now, this is how that works. Kind of interesting. Again, this feature will normally only work if you were like in a phone call conversation, but now you have access to it regardless on any media that you're using, or even if the media is off, I still have access to it. And then if you use the Apple Sport app, if you go into the App Store, yeah, you saw the Apple Vision, I'll talk about that. Actually, I'll talk about it right now. So the Apple Vision Pro app can now be installed separately on the App Store, where previously this was only installed automatically if you had the Apple Vision tied to your Apple ID. So now you have the ability to download the app. Think of this like the Apple Watch app, where it's basically like your companion app for the Apple Watch. That is the Apple Vision version right here. But additionally, in the Sport app, if you click on it, now it actually supports more leagues, including Women Championship and Formula One Racing. So we hit Update, tap Open, and go into My Teams. 
and we type in F1, you'll see Formula One racing. You could track it and start following on the next events. Now, when it comes to using your keyboard, the new emojis that was recently added will now be featured on your most recently used emojis now, where previously you had to manually search them up. Now will actually show up right here. I guess that was a weird bug that Apple resolved. And then if we launch the Apple News app, you know, you can now follow food recipes. But here it is on the previous version. And we enter the news app, not that one, this one. And we tap continue and go to follow and go into food. When you click on an article, the article itself has been redesigned slightly. As you can see, some of the categories and some of the ads I noticed have been moved around a little bit. So now it actually previously used to say by the author, but now it just starts with the author. And then if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, this is what I mean. There's like a new ad section, unfortunately, right there added. So they kind of tweaked it on the food recipe side of things. But those were the new noticeable changes I was able to discover on this latest beta update. So let's go ahead and talk about performance numbers. So before I updated my phone, I did do a Geekbench and these are our numbers we were experiencing. So we got a single core performance score of 3,500 and the multi-core around 3,600. So if we go ahead and launch Geekbench and run those scores right now, let's see what we get. CPU, start. So who we are, uh, 3400 versus 3500 we originally had but same multi-score score honestly these small numbers aren't really the anything significant as they're still pretty close to each other as the previous tests they're not too far apart this is very minor this will be very interesting to compare when we officially get the release date but the performance have been fluctuating but nothing significant and then if we get the thermal gun out real quick see how hot our temperatures reached we got a max of 31 Celsius, which is about equivalent of 89 Fahrenheit. So we did get a little bit hotter than my previous test. Typically my phone will always hover around 87 at most after these. So that's something that, so that's some interesting numbers that we got this time. I'll keep updating you on future videos if this increases or decreases, or maybe it was just today. Even though today has been pretty cold, low 66, it's pretty cold in my room right now too. But in terms of the official release for iOS 18.4, we are expected to see this sometime during April, maybe the first week or second week. It still is hard to tell once we get the RC version of iOS 18.4. That's when we have a general understanding exactly when the date will be. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything new on this latest version of iOS 18.4. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything you need to know about this latest version of iOS 18.4. Let me know in the comments section which one of these features is your personal favorite or what changes you discovered that we may have overlooked. Feel free to comment down below and also share with me your overall experience if you've been seeing a good battery performance, worse performance, Wi-Fi issues, and etc. I'm curious to know what issues are going around right now on people's iPhones. My phone so far has been pretty solid. This beta hasn't get, really gave me any issues. But again, you're supposed to run this on your secondary device or a device that you are well aware may end up crashing or giving you a horrible Apple experience, which is why I don't recommend you doing this on your daily drivers. But I know some of us are rebels. Now, if you enjoyed, if you like these type of updated videos, really appreciate it. If you can take two seconds and quickly hit that like button, a like as that strongly supports the channel, but also lets me know that you guys are also interested whenever Apple makes these small updates and I'll do my best and continue making these updated videos whenever Apple does this on day one. So thank you to those that hit that like button a like strongly does help out the channel now If you wish to watch more, maybe you haven't yet seen my car play video I have that right over there that video recently just hit a million views and has been receiving a lot of positive feedback from my viewers who learned a lot of useful things that Apple CarPlay can deliver I even show you a cool walk around on how you can have your CarPlay automatically pause your media whenever you get in your car because I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that hated that autoplay ability. I go through a clever walk around how to disable that in that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.